Yo, what is up guys? So we are here to showcase off the new guard dragons. I want to kind of consider them generic dragon support, even though they are part of their own archetype. A lot of people aren't really even using them with the cards in their own archetype because you don't really need to. Uh, they actually can function pretty well and we're going to be busting out one of my favorite level monsters, which is Horus, which really comes down to a Naturia beast at the end of the day, but it's got good attacks. Sometimes Naturia beast just gets ran over, but we're going to go ahead and have a first turn Boral Sword. We have a Crystal, Wing, and a Horus. And Horus is just like one of those auto GG cards sometimes where your opponent can't do anything. So just during either player turn, when a spell is activated, you can negate the activation and destroy it. So basically, again, it really comes down to just being able to make this and then have like a one negation. It almost reminds me of like Dark Law plus like another negation. It's just automatically game for a, a lot of decks in some circumstances. But yo... Uh, excuse me, though. But yo, shout out to Theo for this. I'll also give you guys the deck profile for the Horus Guard Dragon deck. But um, that one's more of like, I would say, a tech than like the main cards in the deck, anyways. But there's another build that I wanted to showcase off because, again, the pure variants of this deck are, well, I would say, kind of mediocre. I would say that I've seen the uh, Paladions or the Crusadias. I've seen uh, a lot of different mix up, but pretty much what it comes down to a lot of the times is actually busting out needle fiber and basically just utilizing that to get out your extra cards. We're going to unfortunately get uh, Sarah and Baylor, but it's okay because we are called by the grave to go ahead and say no to that. But I'm going to go ahead and now make the Elfie, the guard dragon. So basically what you're able to do and how this deck really works is being able to summon a dragon from anywhere that you want. Uh, so um, I kind of talked about it in my video, but this is just going to be really quick. So basically, how they work is that um, the Pisty has the effect of, you can only special summon, by the way, both Pisty as well as the Elfie at once per turn. One of the zones points to the left, one of the zone points to the right. And then, uh, Elfie has the effect where it, uh, during your main phase, you can special summon a Dragon Monster from your hand or deck to a to uh, zone to two or more Link Monsters that point to that specific zone. So basically... You want, uh, like, Elfie would be, like, right here where my mouse is, and then Pisty would be here, and then you summon whatever you want. Uh, so that one is pretty good. And then Pisty has the effect where you just special summon one from, uh, that is Banisher in your graveyard. So, there's also the other Link monster, which is Agar Pain. Agar Pain is going to let you special summon it from your extra deck. So, pretty much, you guys can understand, you can summon a dragon literally from anywhere, um, which is actually pretty cool. I like that Winter Phoenix, so shout out to you, my homie. But uh, this guy over here, he makes, oh my gosh, this guy, he's playing them Thunder Dragons, which I think is going to be a pretty strong archetype coming out into the game, especially since we have all those Gold Sarks here in the TCG. I'm guessing he's maxed out on them until, of course, you know, maybe they get hit, I don't know. Um, I believe the OCG did hit the uh, Thunder Dragons, uh, but I'll, I'm going to double check on that when we go to the deck profile. But uh, anyways... This is uh, going to be a heretic build, but pretty much what it comes down to is it's kind of the same concept, I would say, as, of course, going for the Needle Fiber, but uh, this one is not playing Needle Fiber. The other one relies on Needle Fiber, but there's so many different builds that are just, you make Needle Fiber, grab the extra tuner, and then from there you're able to go ahead and make basically two of whatever cards that you want. Now, this instance, he actually made triple Super Bowl Thunder Dragons turn one. I'm not sure if I would consider that good, uh, but, I mean kind of nasty to have three of those i mean you're definitely not going to be searching by any means uh you're not going to be able to use a heretic seal of complication but boral sword is just a really nasty card to run into making it so it can't be destroyed and also being able to move certain things is kind of nice as well also the attack boost can get pretty nasty here but uh, anyways now that you guys can kind of see how they work but i wonder quickly uh before i get into the deck profile of both the different builds that theo as well as winter sent in shout out to both of you guys by the way uh, basically, it just comes down to Needle Fiber, and then from here, obviously, you guys know what Needle Fiber does. This one was actually playing the White Rose Dragon, which I guess they just released. But really what it comes down to is just getting out a free extra card and being able to go into pretty much whatever you want. Uh, this one was also playing the uh, Supreme Dragon Dark Worm as well, just for some extra uh, stuff. But pretty much you're just utilizing this to get an extra free like stepping stone for a lot of your links. Now in this instance, it got Ash Blossom, but... Even though he Ash Blossom, you guys remember, he did summon a Horus as well as a Crystal Wing. And at that point, dude, that's, again, it's a tough board for most decks to break. But anyways, 
I got two different deck profiles for you guys. One's going to be the Heretic one, and one's going to be the Horus, because I think a lot of people would probably consider Horus maybe the only good level monster that we've actually had in the game that's actually still viable, if you were to even summon it, because its effect is pretty good, but you do technically have to run level up to get it out, but because you can special summon the other copy of Horus from literally wherever you want, you can hand banish the deck, literally summon it from wherever you want. You don't have to worry about playing multiple copies of any of the Horus cards. It's just, you just need six and, uh, of course, level eight. So that's kind of cool. But uh, anyways, it's going to be the Horus build for the new Guard Dragon. Like I said, it's a really nasty turn one deck. And even though we got Ash Blossom, we were still able to pull it off. Obviously, without Ash Blossom, uh, you'd, we'd be able to quite make a lot more. But anyways, Double Galaxy Serpent for this build. Uh, we got the Red Ice, we got the Horus, we got uh, the Primordial Chaos Dragon, we got three copies of Destrudo, which this card is really important. Other than that, I don't, I mean, the, you can run Armageddon now. You can also technically run Graffer to extend some of your combo plays. Uh, but we're also playing the uh, Supreme King Gate Zero. We got Horus level six. We got three of the Black Dragons and three of the White Dragons. Again, it's just a little quick level four, so you can just go ahead and go into Pisty and Elfie. Uh, then we have Dark Worm, um, three as well. Then we got the Eclipse Wyvern, Triple Worm again Knight. Triple copy of White Rose Dragon. So when this card is normal summon, you can just special summon a Rose Dragon monster from your hand or graveyard, except for itself. Um, and also we have Red Rose. Basically, they're just other cards. Again, it's just free little cards to get extra Link monsters out in the game. Then we have Garmides the Guard Dragon. This is one of the better ones. So it says if a normal monster is sent from your hand to the graveyard, you get to go ahead and special summon this card from your hand. Again, most people that are playing Guard Dragons, I have not seen them play like the all, all the Guard Dragons. It might be this one, it might be like another one for depending on the build, but overall, most people are just using Needle Fiber and just getting out their stuff anyways. Uh, then we have two copies of Red Rose, and then we have three copies of Level Up, because this is the Horus build. We've got Reinforcement of the Army, we've got three copies of Dragon Shrine, two copies of Terraforming, one Foolish, and three copies of Ravine. For the extra deck, we got Crystal, we got Black Rose, we got Coral, we got Boral Load, Boral Sword, three Burst Blast Dragon, Unicorn, Phoenix, Needle Fiber, double of those. we got one copy of our one, uh two copies of Elfie, and two copies of Hissy. Now, the other build that you guys saw, the Heretic one, I'm gonna go ahead and bust out that one. I'm gonna call it, I think I'll like, where is it at? Uh, the Heretic Guards. Okay, so we got three Labyrinth. We got three copies of Lustia. This is the other one that I've seen people play. This one technically has more, but usually people are playing like Carmides. But uh, this is another one of the Guard Dragons. Uh, technically, I made a video going over all of them, but I figured we'll just go over short little effects just in case. So this lets you send it from your hand or field to the graveyard. You get to boost up a dragon monster by 500 attack and offense until the end of your opponent's turn. But if a normal monster is sent to your graveyard while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but you banish it when it leaves the field. Again, same thing, just more little small cards to go for your other cards. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, the normal monster that's also a tuner, which is kind of good in here. Uh, and this one, he's, he's maxing out. I'm not sure if I would recommend maxing out on all of the vanillas because that can make your hands quite bad. But uh, at the same time, I mean, he pulled it off pretty consistent anyways. Um, but, you know, having the normal monsters technically for this isn't as bad as other decks because a lot of them revolve basically around uh, Lustia. But uh, anyways, yeah, three copies of uh, each of the vanillas. You'll put Rescue Rabbit in here? <laughs> no. no. Um, anyways, we got Rider's Darkness Metal Dragon, and we got Destrudo. I think you should max out on Destrudo for the most part, but his build is different. It's a heretic build. But for the most part, people are just maxing out on this Armageddon Knight. Simple concept. Going to need a fiber. Uh, next up, we have three copies of Sooth, three copies of Tefnuit, three copies of Nebthet, three copies of Aset, uh, two copies of Carmides, two copies of Prominesis. We got three copies of Heretic Seal. We got two copies of Wing Beat. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this card really in the game. Most people are just playing so many hand traps. I'd rather just play two Call by the Grave and maybe uh, something else instead. Maybe some uh, some negation to stop your opponent from doing stuff. Some of those hand traps to Ash Forehead. Uh, next up, we got two copies of Cards of Constance. We got Dragon Shrine. Two copies of uh, Celestial Sexton. This is actually a really unique card. So this makes you place one level six uh, monster from your hand or face up on the field to the bottom of your deck to draw two cards. So this is gonna kind of help out with your consistency also with certain cards, you know, it definitely does help out. It's kind of like draw power, if you will, for that, the deck. I mean, obviously it works quite well um, with anything that is gonna be playing level six monsters, but heretics, that's pretty easy. But like, I wish it was something that you can reset these cards. I generally don't like these cards. It's pretty much just Sue and Tefnuit. Those are like the, the main heretic cards that everyone plays. But nonetheless, it is there at two, so I think it's okay. 
Uh, then we got Foolish Reborn, two copies of Designator, and two copies of Silver's Cry. I thought it was a pretty unique card to add in. Obviously, he's playing a lot of vanilla, so that can kind of help out and extend some of his combo plays. For the extra deck, we've got Soken, we've got the Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend Abyss, we've got Crystal Wing, two copies of Atum, we got uh, Boral Load, Boral Sword, Suryuja, Agar Pain at two. Uh, we got two copies of Heretic Seal of Celestial Spheres, so that's a pretty good card. Let's just post some summon eight dragon and monster from your hand or deck. It's attack and defense becomes zero, but it doesn't matter. You're just going to bring out this and get out another card. And then from there, you're going to bring back this card more than likely anyways. And then we have uh, two copies of Elfie and one copy of Pisty. And these are cards maybe he was trying out and just didn't like over here. But uh, I was also messing around. For those of you guys that uh, watched me stream this deck, um, I was trying to mess around with, like a pure variant with Dragoon and D's, just kind of trying it out. Um, a lot of the cards are just not as good, I would say, because a lot of times you'd, you'd rather make your play than play passively and sit with a guard dragon or corruption and then tribute your cards and wait one turn to do anything. But there are certain times where I've noticed, um, this was, don't, don't copy this, this build is not, like, optimized at all. It was just something we were trying. But, um, there are certain times where I wanted to use Elfie as material or Pisty as material to go into another card, and even though I would have, like, a Dux to get back Phalanx to get me basically two monsters to go into both of these, um, the problem is, is you can't just go straight into both of these because then you'd have both of them pointing themselves. You'd actually have to have them swap the location, and then you'd be able to get out a card, and then you wouldn't be able to get out your Garpain, which would then allow you to go for other plays. Uh, but... The problem that this deck can have, depending on the build that you run, is Elfie and also Pisties can only be special summoned once per turn. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Don't mess up like I did with the Dragoon variant. But nonetheless, you guys got two different builds. And the Dragoon one, I would say, again, most of the cards in the Archive are just not too viable, in my personal opinion, when you're playing a pure variant. I think that they're much better mixed in. But uh, there are some other cards. I didn't really go over them too much because I went over them uh, technically when I went over my video. But there is a card that lets you uh, actually move a location. That is Guard Dragon of the World Legacy. Um, so this one lets you add it to your hand or special summon a monster, which I think is pretty good. But then also once you target a dragon monster, you get to move it to another zone, which is, I think, one of the best ways to actually utilize some of like the core mechanics of how they're supposed to be played because you want them to be pointing to, to uh, you need two arrows pointing to one area then you get a monster out from wherever this deck actually has a lot of potential to be super broken in the future because again you can special summon anything you can special jump on a dragon from the extra deck hand deck graveyard banner so you literally have everything at your disposal but anyways hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the guard dragons let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section below do you guys think this archetype is good do you think it's bad i'd love to see other builds uh i i, I, want, I want kind of want to see a pure variant so if you guys have any pure variants that are actually kind of viable i'd love to see the other variants and combos of this deck if you want to send in a replay feel free to send it in but shout out to you guys for sending in those plays appreciate it if you guys got any other plays, like i said there it is asian eyes replays at gmail.com feel free to go ahead and send it in but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on the new Yu-Gi-Oh! archetypes, gameplays, when it comes out. Thanks for watching. Peace out. And I'm out.